So I'm gonna to talk to you guys for a second about how I make praying mantis habitats. The way I do it isn't necessarily, I think, the best way to keep a mantis, but what I like about it is I think it looks the nicest. So this is a cheap, easy way to take care of a praying mantis as a pet uh, using just a mason jar. You'll see that I have a graduated mason jar. This is a little bit bigger. Uh, burlap for the lid in place of uh, woven cloth. Pretty easy to do, not that expensive. You can get all this stuff in Michaels. Except maybe the bones, I guess. We've, we found those outside. These are my mantis habitat. And if you can tell, Exoterra moon light bulb. It puts out heat without putting on a lot of light. And then right over here, we have my uh, humidity and temperature gauge. So I can make sure that they're healthy. And you can see down here, one of my orchids. This is all you're really gonna need to make a nice little habitat pretty cheaply. We can see we have the burlap for the larger ones. And if you look really closely, you can see uh, fine mesh burlap ribbon we can use for the tops of these ones. Um, fake flowers, that's gonna help it be a little bit cuter looking, you can see right there. Um, and then we have the floral accents. This lichen is gonna hold some of the moisture. And then this is a larger mason jar we can use later. So all you're gonna need with your first one is to remove this. You don't need this piece. And then you're gonna cut ribbon to size to fit here. And I use a little bit of super glue, but you don't have to. A lot of people say use something like uh, hot glue that's gonna be less caustic for the creatures. An example of uh, hot glue you can see in here. Um, this is too thick though for fruit flies. This is really just for crickets. And here it is with super glue that I've already done. And that can fit right on top of the lid there. So if you've got your mason jar, your cloth lid, we'll just do a little bit of lichen. I like to break it up just a little bit so it's not too messy. And we'll have that at the bottom. Go down into your yard, find yourself a stick. You want something with a Y like this we can just put easily right in there if you want right there like that and that should make a nice seal and then you have a mantis habitat um, to take care of them you'll feed them they'll usually stick out onto the top of here this is where they like to hang out if we visit my current guys they'll be hanging out on the lid right there that's where they're uh, that's where they'll be most of the time. Before you put in your mantis, you're gonna wanna take a little bit of your, whatever kind of water you have. You spritz it down. This should get it nice and wet, and you can close it. That'll keep the humidity up. And that's really it. That's all you need to do. When you're creasing in size, and you don't need this fine thing for the fruit flies anymore, you can move on to the bigger ones. This is about as big as any mantis is going to need. You can see that it breathes well, it's well ventilated. The glass is going to hold the humidity better than plastic. Um, but be aware some species can't walk on the glass especially the B Mendic I have in the jars next to me. Those dark brown ones can't walk on glass. They can only walk on the sticks. And it's really just be aware that you need to make sure that you have enough humidity and enough stuff for them to climb on. Because they're going to want to reach the top and you really want the stick to come pretty close to the top there. You can see even in this jar, the stick comes pretty high up. For feeding, I have here, this is an old fruit fly culture. It's kind of a little dirty. Um, I'm about done with it. I'll probably either let them go or throw it all away and, and let them fend for themselves. And this is a cricket culture. You can see that I have in here. Um, these little green things are jellies. They'll hydrate and give them some vitamins. And then I just have basic ventilation here and on the lid. And for these, I will feed them 
through a feeder jar where I'll kind of dump out just a little corner of these guys uh, and then use that feeder jar to feed into the actual habitats. That way I don't overfeed them, uh, which could stress them out. Just a few quick additional notes. Um, when I put water in there, I use filtered water. Some people suggest using distilled water. It really depends on the species. Some are going to be more temperamental than others. When you're putting in flowers and other decorations, don't overdo it. Make sure there's enough room for them to molt. For temperature and humidity, it really depends on the species. Most are happy with room temperature, a little bit above that, with uh, dips at night. Um, some species will like much higher humidity, some will like much higher heat. For those, you just need to be aware and go online and look for care sheets. For misting, I like to do it once in the morning and once again in the evening, and just try to keep the humidity around 50% or higher for the humid species, and about 50% for everybody else.